Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Wednesday morning, midweek of the 22nd week after Pentecost. And uh, before we talk about our saints of the day, as always, please like, subscribe, uh, follow us on Facebook. And uh, particularly, if you have prayer concerns, share them with us now in the live comments on Facebook. We'll read them um, at the appropriate point of the office following the prayer attributed to St. Francis. And if you're watching later, still share your concerns and we will catch up and share them uh, at our next daily office tonight at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. Now today we remember three saints, uh, Richard Roll, Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Kemp. I hope I pronounced all of that well. They are 14th century mystics. And as I said uh, before we came on air, I've always struggled with what does it mean to be a mystic? Um, and today I had the aha moment, which is why father asked me to speak. Um, there's something in the diocese of New Jersey, we call the way of St. Paul. And that reminded me that, uh, these mystics are people who are seeking a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and through their writings and through their actions are helping others along the way to form that same relationship. Um, in the in the order of uh, their timelines, uh, Richard Richard Roll came first. He was born in the late uh, late four, late fourteenth. I'm tripping over. I think they were in the fourteenth century. They were, but he um, was born in the late thirteenth. Thank you, and uh, wrote wrote a book which inspired. Um, Walter Hilton, which inspired, uh, and they both inspired Marjorie Kemp. Um, there was some question at the time, they thought Marjorie Kemp was odd. Um, women didn't read or write. Uh, she, but she wrote uh, the first autobiography of the Middle Ages. And it was about her, her tour of spiritual places. She was, um, in contact with Julian of Norwich, another another mystic, and uh, you know, looking back, she wasn't odd at all. We were just in those days; women didn't do such things. So, um, an inspiration for all of us. And um, as I said, I, I deeply appreciate now. Um, in my my personal theology is about in being relationship with Jesus and helping others along the way. So. Now I have uh, role models to look after and follow. Anything to add to that, Father? One of the fascinating things about Marjorie Kemp in her penning the first autobiography in English um, ever, and then one of the earliest in, uh, in the medieval times, is that she also um, is credited as being one of the greatest cultural historians of the uh, of the early Brit British time, that she's she's right up there with the Venerable Bede in terms of her descriptions of culture, and she's also a treasure trove of that because very few people wrote from her perspective, which was as of a middle class English woman. Um, so, you know, on many levels, she is an incredible treasure trove. Uh, and you're you're playing it kindly. She was called insane, a witch, <laughs> a heretic. Um, uh, you know, th there were, there were all kinds of things that were said of her and, uh, really it was Julian of Norwich's defense, um, that basically kept her from persecution. So really a remarkable person. So, and then Richard Rowley and, 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 uh, Walter Hilton, both, um, their works, you know, one of the things that is powerful is that these, these were not, um, great scholars, if you will. These are not the, the, the lights of the age. These are the folks who were in effect in, in effect in the trenches um, of of this spiritual revival of the 14th century? So, good times. Yes, and so now we uh, remember our saints of the day and begin morning prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, 
O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 119. I will read the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Go away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth count you all the wicked of the earth you count as dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Yet even now, says the Lord, 
Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule, vestibule and the altar, let priests, the minister of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? When the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. In response to his people, the Lord said, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a mockery among the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning is the third song of Isaiah, together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation of John. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name inscribed that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, wearing fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and with a loud voice, he called to all the birds that fly in mid heaven, come gather for the great supper of God to eat the flesh of rulers, the flesh of captains, the flesh of the mighty, the flesh of horses and their riders, flesh of all, both free and slave, both small and great. Then I saw the beast and the rulers of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against the rider on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who had performed in its presence the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were killed by the sword of the rider on the horse, the sword that came from his mouth, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, You Are God, together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim, seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death. You opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Direct our hearts, O gracious God, and inspire our minds that like your servants Richard Roll, Walter Hilton, and Marjorie Kemp, we might pass through the cloud of unknowing until we behold your glory face to face. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Together, let us say a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. 
where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are, par are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for Chris as he continues to recover from surgery, for Marilyn as she recovers as well. Pray for all those who are struggling with their health. Prayers for children who are living in fear, who have no self-esteem, who are just shadows of what children ought to be because of the violence around them. Surround them with your love and protect them, Lord. Prayers for Amanda in her new pregnancy. Be with her in this time. Be a guiding light to her and Blake as they navigate this exciting but also fearful time. The Anglican Cycle of Prayer. We pray for the Diocese of Central Newfoundland, the Anglican Church of Canada. And the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, let's pray for the whole Diocese of New Jersey. And the soon-to-be election of our 13th Bishop. How about that? There well you. done. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you and holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, that concludes morning prayer and gets a great start to our very busy day. Uh, we have a few minutes to get some coffee and uh, maybe a snack. And then we have Bible study. And after Bible study, we have noon Eucharist and all kinds of uh, service around the church. We get the, um, the kitchen crew getting ready for supper tonight. And we're back together again for evening prayer at five o'clock. Uh, serving of the supper, I think it's still about 4.30. Um, was comb board yesterday? Is comb board today? Today, tonight. Okay. And confirmation class, right? Nope. Yep, they're all done? They're all done. All right. So one last thing. Just one. That is, 
That is just a glimpse of all the things we do here in Spotswood. Check out our website, stpeterspotswood.org to see all the bits we do. Have a blessed day wherever you are, and we will be together again, five o'clock evening prayer. See you soon. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.